Hello once again. Uh, it's Pastor John, Pastor John Wilson at Farm Loop Christian Center in Palmer, Alaska. And we're uh, doing some experimentation with our ministries. And one of them is to produce these eight or ten minute short teachings for those who would like to uh, join us in that way. And I'm going to start a series today based upon the book of Mark. And the same way I preach is kind of how I will teach a little differently today. But I'm going to go through the book of Mark with you for the next however long it takes, verse by verse or section by section. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to learn uh, a lot more in that process. So let's begin by reading the passage. We're going to start with Mark chapter 1, and we're going to go verse 1 through verse 5. This is how it is. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Then all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. So today, as we start this, uh, let's just open in prayer. Father, I ask you in Jesus' name, would you uh, let your word come alive to us today? Would you show us something fresh or something new or something better understood that would impact our lives for you and that we would sense the presence of the Spirit of God and the person of Jesus Christ speaking to us through these very words. Be with us now, we pray, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, as we start here, we look at the word, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And what I wanted to share here is everything has a beginning. It doesn't matter what it is. Somewhere it came from something and was accomplished by some power. The only thing that we know for sure that didn't have a beginning is God himself. And he, being eternal, established all of the material universe that we know of today and has established the spiritual laws of that universe. So Mark, in his writing here, is bringing out the reality that at the very beginning of his story of Jesus Christ, it's all about the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word gospel, in case you don't know, is a word which means the good news. And there's a lot I could tell you about that from the Greek but I don't think it's necessary for this kind of study. Basically, it is the good news that God loves mankind, that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, into this world as a human being and also as the son of God and brought redemption to those of us who would put our trust in him. So John Mark, the author of this Bible, or the author of this book, excuse me, is saying to whoever reads it, when you begin to read this book, you need to know that you're reading good news. And so many times in the world today, they tell us that the Bible is only bad news. It's not. It's very good news to those of us who want to hear and to learn about who God is. So this is the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, what do we mean by that? We mean that it's going to tell us in a short version in the gospel of Mark, the story of the earthly life of Jesus Christ, how he lived, what he taught, how he related to different people, and how he came to do the will of his Father. So that gives you a kind of a basic outline of the gospel of Mark that we're looking at in this series. So let's go now to verse 2. It says this, As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. So here, when he refers to the prophets, he's speaking of the reality that God had a plan. And his plan includes you, if you are listening, and it includes his son, Jesus Christ. But he goes back and refers to the prophets, which takes us back thousands of years, where God, through certain men, gave certain information that if we would listen, it would make it possible for us to recognize who Jesus Christ was. You see, some people believe that Jesus was just a good man 
or that he was a great teacher, or he was confused. There's a lot of different beliefs about Jesus, but God wanted to make sure that we understood the true Jesus. And so he gave us markers or identifiers through the prophets for thousands of years of what this person would be, who he would be, and what he would look like. It began all the way back, actually, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. When Adam and Eve sinned and brought about the need for our Savior, God said, I will indeed send you a Savior. His name was not given then, but his reality was exposed. And in Genesis 3.15, God says, I will send to you one who will be the seed of redemption. And so you can look that up later instead of trying to keep up with me now. Go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, and you'll read the first open prophecy in all of Scripture about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you can read all the way through the Old Testament over the weeks and months to come, and I will refer many times to the Old Testament, and see that God had a plan from the very beginning. In fact, if you go to Revelation chapter 13, that's the last book of the Bible, you'll read in verse 8 that the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. That's a statement, again, of what God was doing. But it was from the very beginning, before the foundation of the world, God knew that we as human beings would sin and that we would need a Savior. And because of his great love for us, he provided a Savior. He told us that he knew this before creation, and he tells us right after creation, right after Adam and Eve's sin, and you would think everything is lost, he says, no, it's not. I love you so much, I will provide for you a Savior. I will provide for you a Redeemer. And that person is, in fact, Jesus Christ, who lives today. He lives in heaven at the throne of Father God, and he also, by his Spirit, lives in the throne of our hearts as we come to know him as Savior. So that's the first step, is written that there would be prophets. And then it goes on and says in verse 2, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare you or prepare your way before you. That messenger was John the Baptist. John the Baptist is a very unique person in the scripture. We'll learn a little bit more about him as we go through this series. But John was sent to prepare the way. That means that in essence, his ministry was to let people know that God was about to do something. John was the, what we might call the closing of the Old Testament and the prophets and the opening of the New Testament as he's telling them, get ready, be ready. Someone very special is coming into this world. Someone very special is here and is about to be made known to human beings. And that person was and is Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. And what he does is, is as I tell you to prepare, I also tell you to make the paths straight for his coming. What is he talking about there? If you read it, it says, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. That's verse 3. John was crying out into the wilderness of humanity, lost humanity, and he was saying to them, Get your heart straight. Open up the pathways. Clear the road to your heart that the Christ, the Savior, Jesus Christ, can enter in when you see him and recognize him and receive him by faith. That's what John was all about. His whole message was to tell the world that the Savior was coming into the world. And that's the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that's where we start with this whole idea of the gospel of Christ, to prepare our hearts, to make a straight path, get things out of the way so that Jesus Christ can come and have the rulership in your lives. And then John goes on, it says in verse 4, preaching a baptism of repentance. That's making the heart prepared. That's making the pathway straight to say, Lord God, I am a sinner and I need Jesus Christ as my Savior. And it says in this passage that we read earlier that all the people of Judea came out and they were baptized by John 
in a baptism of repentance. What is that? The baptism itself was just a statement that we need to know that when we learn about Jesus Christ, whatever that may be, if it's as our Savior or as our Lord who lives in us and leads us and guides us throughout lives, we are to respond. It's not just to know it. It's not just to have it in our minds. It's not just to have it in our hearts. But it's that we would respond to the good news of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for this day. Bless all who've listened today, and may they, if they've never made a commitment to Jesus, do so today by a simple prayer of acceptance. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The Lord bless you. You have a great day or a great evening or whatever part of the day you're in. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.